In this section, we answer the question, when is the comparison functor k full and faithful? Throughout this section, we fix an adjoint situation fg and set t to be the monad induced by this adjoint situation. The last time we showed that the unique functor j from the Claisley category to a is full and faithful. We want to know when the comparison functor k from a to the eilenberg mohr category is full and faithful. The composition kj is the unique embedding functor from the Claisley category to the eilenberg mohr category, realizing the Claisley category as a subcategory of free objects in it. Then the mental picture we have is that the Claisley category is like the indestructible yoke in each such category A in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. Then the restriction of K to the image of the Claisley category in A is also an embedding, but we ask how does K place the category A in the eilenberg mohr category? We start with the criterion of faithfulness. We have K is faithful if and only if G is faithful, if and only if the co-unit of FG is an epimorphism. To prove this, since UTK is equal to G and UT is faithful, the following diagram shows that K is injective on HOM sets if and only if G is injective on HOM sets. And we have already shown that G is faithful if and only if the co-unit is epimorphism. And so that completes this proof. The more interesting statement is the following. We have the comparison functor K is full and faithful if and only if the co-unit epsilon is a regular epimorphism. To prove the forward direction, we suppose k is full and faithful. We claim that the diagram is the co-equalizer diagram for each a object a. To show this, we need to first verify that epsilon a fg epsilon a is equal to epsilon a epsilon fg a. But this follows from the naturality square for the co-unit epsilon on the right. Second, we need to show that epsilon a enjoys the universal mapping property of the co-equalizer. So we let f be an amorphism co-equalizing fg, epsilon a, and epsilon fga. We consider the e-morphism a to ga followed by gf. We want to show gf a to ga is a morphism in the eilenberg mohr category from ka to kb. In other words, we want to show the following square commutes. We have gf a to ga, g epsilon a, is equal to gf, gf, g epsilon a, a to gf, ga, by the naturality of eta on the right. We factor out g in the left-hand composition and use the fact that f co-equalizes fg epsilon a and epsilon fg a, we obtain gf epsilon fg a eta gf g a. We distribute g and see that the right-hand composition is the identity morphism by the triangle identity for the adjoint situation fg. So we end up with gf. Then to get it into the form we want, we pre-compose by the identity in the form of g epsilon f g a f a to g a. Then we obtain g f g epsilon f g a g f a to g a. We use the naturality of epsilon again to finally arrive at g epsilon b g f g f a to g a, which shows that the yellow diagram does in fact commute. And so g f a to g a is a morphism in the eilenberg mohr category. Then since k is full, there exists a unique amorphism f hat such that k on f hat is equal to g f a to g a. We want to show that f hat is the unique factorization of f through epsilon a in the diagram above. Uniqueness follows from epsilon being an epimorphism since g is faithful, so we only have to show that f hat epsilon a is equal to f. As e-morphisms, we have g f a to g a is equal to u t k f hat by the definition of f hat. We precompose by the identity in the form of a triangle identity, g epsilon a, a to g a. Then factoring out g, we obtain g f hat epsilon a, a to g a. Therefore, by the universal mapping property of the unit, a to, we have f is equal to f hat epsilon a. Therefore, the diagram above is a co-equalizer diagram, and thus, epsilon is a regular epimorphism, which completes the forward direction. For the converse, we have already shown that the co-unit is an epimorphism if and only if k is faithful above. So we only have left to show fullness of k. So we take a morphism g in the eilenberg mohr category with domain ka and codomain ka prime. Since epsilon is assumed to be a regular epimorphism, there exists this co-equalizer diagram. Then we consider the composite f u t g followed by epsilon a prime. We want to show that epsilon a prime f u t g r is equal to epsilon a f u t g s, thereby inducing a unique factorization from a. 
We have already shown that g is faithful since k is faithful. Therefore, it is enough to show that g on epsilon a prime f u t g r is equal to g on epsilon a prime f u t g s. So we first distribute g over the composition on the left-hand side of the equation to get g epsilon a prime g f u t g g r. Then by naturality of epsilon, we obtain u t g g epsilon a g r. But g epsilon a g r is equal to g epsilon a g s since epsilon a coequalizes r and s. So we get u t g g epsilon a g s. And then we factor out g to arrive at what we want. Therefore, since epsilon a prime f u t g equalizes r and s, there exists this unique amorphism h such that h epsilon a is equal to epsilon a prime f u t g. So we have u t k h g epsilon a is equal to g h g epsilon a since u t k is equal to g. And this is equal to g epsilon a g f u t g by the equality of h epsilon a and epsilon a prime f u t g. Then by the purple diagram on the left, this is u t g g epsilon a. But g epsilon a is a split epimorphism since g epsilon a a to g a is the identity on g a by the triangle identity for the adjoint situation f g. Therefore, we cancel it from the right to get u t k h is equal to u t g. So we have k h is equal to g since u t is faithful. Therefore, k is full, and that completes the proof.